Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about fruit, works, and well-doing. I've been wanting to talk about this for a while and it kind of goes in the category of end times. So we're actually going to go through a few verses here. I'm going to try to keep this video super short. I'm going to try. Um, we're going to talk about fruit, works, and well-doing. And those are going to be the mark of the true believer, God's true believer, because there's going to be a lot of people that claim to be a Christian and are not. How to recognize them are these particular things. So we're going to start with fruit. And Matthew 17, or 7, 16, excuse me, Matthew 7, 16, you will recognize God's people by their fruit. What is fruit? Well, I actually have those written down here. Let's just take a quick look. So God's fruit is love. We know that that is an intense feelings of deep effect, affection, joy above happiness and strength. Joy is just overwhelming. It's just there. No matter what the situation in life is, you feel a joy inside you. Um, peace, freedom from disturbance, tranquility, calmness, harmony, forbearance, which is a, a patient self-control, self-restraint, um, a tolerance, kindness it's friendly generous considerate i'm just going through these very quickly goodness is morally good or virtuous beneficial goodness is what god's definition or the bible's definition of good not our definition because those can sometimes be very different faithfulness being faithful loyal stable dependable devoted um, gentleness, kind, tender, mild-mannered, softness, self-control, the ability to control oneself, their actions, their words, especially in difficult situations. Um, these are all fruit of the Spirit of God. So when you are filled with the Spirit, and I know this is controversial for some people, and this is how I believe, this is how my husband believes as well, when you are saved, you do receive the Holy Spirit, but it's a separate thing to be filled with the Spirit as well. The power of God and being filled with the Spirit is what fills you with God's fruit. So that fruit is going to be evident. Um, it's just going to come a lot easier for you when the Holy Spirit is guiding you. And you're not trying to make these things happen. Um, and you're you're living in the flesh, basically. You can't make those things happen. You can't generate that same level of those fruits without the Holy Spirit. So next, we're going to look at works. <laughs> Excuse me, works. James 2, 14 through 17 says, What good is faith without works? Are, or works without faith. Faith without works is dead, just like the body without the spirit is dead. Hey, it's me editing here. Um, I just wanted to add really quick, talking about like the, the body without the spirit is dead. That includes the body of Christ, the church. You can tell um, without the Holy Spirit, the church is dead. Have you ever thought about that? Something to think about. Faith without the the accompanied action is dead, is what that's saying. Don't say to a hungry person, go and be filled. Give them food. <laughs> Let your actions um, benefit the kingdom of God. Let that reflect the Lord that you serve. We're supposed to reflect what he would do, and that's what he would do. So, I mean, I've had lots of people in my life um, say, well, let me know if you need prayer. Pray for me. 
<laughs> I don't, I shouldn't have to ask you to pray for me. It, if you are a believer, you should be praying for me already. I pray for you, you know, <laughs> especially if you are in the same church. You shouldn't have to ask for prayer. You shouldn't. Um, and, and, and I'm saying prayer. It could be anything. If you have someone who doesn't have food in their cupboard, those with food should fill that need. So I know that people are going to say, well, how do you know that they need it? Well, if you do know, you know, maybe in that type of a situation, you might not know because you don't know what's in their cupboard. But, you know, in a situation like prayer um, or you see somebody coming to church with holes in their clothes or something like that, that is definitely something you shouldn't have to ask. It, it should be it should be in you to want to pray and lift up your brother or sister um, and strengthen them because it strengthens them. So, uh, yeah, the Greek word for works used in this verse by Paul is ergon, and I'm, I may be pronouncing it wrong. Um, it's E-R-G-O-N, and the meaning is talking about actions, your deeds, um, your behavior. It's not necessarily talking about the works that Greek word that Paul used is going along with fruit. It is a direct correlation with your fruit. So James 2.18 says someone might say to you, you have faith and I have deeds. I, I can literally think of certain religions. I don't know if they like to be called a religion, but um, certain religions that would say, you know, it's all about works. And they, they are the people that will come to your door, knocking on your door. Um, and you might see them walking around places. It's all about works. Those are the people that might say this to you, you know, you have faith, but I have works. But I would say, and it should be in every true believer's heart. My works reflect my faith. Now, this is this is a good time to pause the video and just think and, and look at yourself and say, does my deeds, does my works, does my fruit reflect the faith that I'm claiming? Or is it all words? You know what I mean? The true believer will love and obey the word of God. They will have and reflect the love of God. John 14, 15 through 17 says, if you love me, you will obey me. That's what Jesus said. If you love me, you will obey me. And it actually, those verses in John goes on to, to explain that when he leaves, God is going to be sending the Holy Spirit to be a helper to us with these things. So a lot of the fruit of God, we're really kind of incapable of on our own. I mean, we can fake it for a while. There are very, very few people in my life that I have known that really reflect the love of God, that I could feel the love of God just in their presence. I could feel their love for me um, and, you know, even just the person standing them next, next to them in the grocery store. You can really tell who really has the love of God in them. They're, they're going to go out of their way for you. Um, and they're not going to tell everyone. I, I want to say that because yeah, they're not going to go around and say, well, I did this and I spent all this time, spent all afternoon doing this and this and this for you. Well, there's your reward. That's um, that's what the Bible says. That's your reward is having the praise of the people around you. Because what you do in secret, God will reward. Do you know what I mean? Look that Bible verse up and leave it in the comments below.
1 Corinthians 16, 14, it says, let all that you do be done in love. Proverbs 3, 27 and 28 says, do not withhold good from whom it's due when it's in your power to do it. Don't say come when you're in need, but if they're in need, do it right then. You know what I mean? If somebody's hungry, feed them then. If someone needs prayer, stop right there and pray right then. You know, don't make them, don't make them have to come and ask you. Titus 1.16 says, They profess to know God, but deny him with their works. There's a lot of people out there like that. There's a lot of people who claim to be Christian, but deny God with their actions, with their works, with their fruit. There's somebody who I was following on YouTube and um, I stopped. She, I'm not going to say her name, but I followed her probably for maybe about five years and um, she lives in Texas and she, um, I thought she was a Christian. She talks like a Christian. You would think she was a Christian, but some of the things that she does and honestly, some of the conversations that her and I have had behind the scenes, it's just not the same person that she portrays herself to be on film and, you know, was just a very... Um, she was promoting things on her channel that the Bible is clearly against. And her answer to that was, well, God's love. God is love. And God is love. But God is also very just. And his word is true. There's a reason that everything that's in this Bible is in there. There's a reason for it. So James 4.17 says, whoever knows the right thing to do but doesn't do it, to him it's a sin. Titus 2.7, show yourself to be a model of good works. You know as well as I do, people are watching. If you are a Christian, people are watching. My husband used to say that all the time before he got saved. He would look at people that called themselves Christian and would wonder, you know, why do they argue with each other? Why do they disagree with each other? Um, why do they say this and then do that? We need to really be aware because people are watching. We need to be reflecting the Lord. If that's what we're claiming, we need to reflect it. We don't want to be one of those people that profess to know God but deny Him with our actions, with our works, with our fruit, you know? So Romans 12, 10 says, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Outdo one another, showing honor. That is a true reflection of the Lord. You know what I mean? This has been on my mind and I've wanted to talk to you about it. Um, I kind of want to do a series of end times people, both sides of that. I just kind of want to point out, you know, we need to be aware of who we're around, who we associate with, who we're listening to, who is influencing us. You know, we live in an age that there are influencers everywhere, all over YouTube, all over Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I don't even know all of these other, like there's so many, there's so many. Um, we need to be careful. We need to, we need to know what the Bible says. We need to pray to be filled with the spirit. The Holy Spirit will let you know if when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, he is going to let you know that's truth or that's not true. So, um, yeah, 
So this is going to conclude our topic today. Um, I just wanted to roughly get that out there. Anyway, I hope you guys got something out of this and I hope that you really look into it for yourselves. Um, I'm literally just skimming over the top of it here. Really pay attention because somebody's fruit is going to show you who they are. Are they, are they warm? Are they loving? Do they genuinely care about you? That's where their actions are going to come into play. Are their actions lining up with what their words are saying or not? So anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye for now.